Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful second Sunday in Advent. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives our sin, who in, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. The Son of Righteousness shall rise with shining beams of healing. Let us gather under the wings of God's mercy. Merciful God, we acknowledge that we are sinners and we confess our sins those known to us that burden our hearts, and those unknown to us but seen by you. We know that before you nothing remains hidden, and in you everything is revealed. Free us from the slavery of sin. Liberate us from the bondage of guilt. Work in us that which is pleasing in your sight. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. With a heart full of compassion, God forgives us all our sins. Christ, the dawn from on high, shines upon us, and by the light of the Holy Spirit, guides our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share God's peace. Our service continues on page 147 on the front of our red hymnals. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, 
Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Let us pray. Stir up your hearts, Lord God, to repair the way of your only Son. By his coming, give to all the people of the world knowledge of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated and... Jesse? God of light. We come before you seeking your hope and power. Our hearts desire your presence. We are waiting for the dawn from on high to break upon us. We light candles trusting that the smallest flame can drive out our greatest fears. We anticipate your coming among us with peace and thankfulness. As we await your coming, light a flame within us. May we shine with the brightness of your hope. God of light, as we light this second candle, Open our voices to declare your goodness. You came from on high into the depths of our lives, into both the joy and the despair, and you declare your grace for each of us. Guide us in the path of peace. Light a flame within us. May we shine with the brightness of your light. God of light, we remember today our brothers and sisters in Nepal, as they wait for healing and support, give them your peace. We pray for your presence, knowledge, and protection for our neighbors amid the challenges they face. Grant them health and understanding. Light a flame within us. May we shine with the brightness of your hope. God of light, Keep our voices turned to words of praise. May we always follow your path of peace. 
Guide us in these Advent days until our Savior is born among us. Turn our attention to you, the one who is our song, our hope, and our joy. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, the light that has no end. Amen. So, Jesse, since you're already up here, it's kind of handy. Now, we're, there's lots of different symbols we have for Christmas and for Advent. Last week, we talked about the color blue. But this week, we've got these candles. And Advent candles are kind of cool because they're kind of like a countdown. How many weeks do we have left before Christmas? Well, well, we've got two more Sundays before Christmas because we've lit two candles and we've got two left. Now, the candles have different meanings. And, of course, like everything else in the church, everyone has their own meaning for the candles. Some folks say that the candles are for the prophets, the shepherds, the angels, and the star. And those are all parts of the story of Jesus' birth, right? We got prophets who proclaimed that Jesus was coming and the shepherds who were there. Others say that they, they represent peace and joy and love and hope. Well, that's pretty good, too, because those are also all of the things that Advent reminds us that Jesus' birth was about. Peace that God is going to give to the world and the hope that God is still coming to bring us our salvation and the joy that the baby Jesus was born and Christ died and rose for, to save us from our sins and the love of God that all ties that together when you come and see the Advent candle. Advent candles, they remind us of the story of Jesus' birth and all the things that go on with it. And we might even come up with new meanings for the candles. But they're there to remind us that that special day is coming and we've only got two more Sundays until it's here. Is that cool? Awesome. That's great, Pastor. No. Thank you. The middle candle. Oh, I'm so glad you asked. The middle candle is the light of Christ. And we don't get to light that one until Christmas Eve, until the baby Jesus is born. And then that candle... And that one back there, that one we will use to remember the light of Christ all the way until Good Friday. And then, then for just a few days, we put that candle out. Nice question. Let's go back to our seats.
The first reading today is from Malachi chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. God announces a covenant with Israel, a messenger like Malachi. His name means my messenger. We'll prepare the way for the coming of the Lord by purifying and refining God's people as silver and gold are refined. The reading from Malachi. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, like a fuller's soap. He will set as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and is in former years. The word of the Lord. The psalm is from Luke chapter 1, verses 68 through 79, and we will read it responsibly. It's printed in your bulletins. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets, you promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The second reading comes from Philippians chapter 1, verses 3 through 11. The Apostle Paul was the pastor of many new churches. He writes in this letter about his joy to be in partnership with the Christians of Philippi. Listen how tender-hearted Paul, sometimes a stern preacher, is with his friends as he encourages them to grow in love and knowledge. The reading begins. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing of the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is for me to think this way about you, It is right for me to think this way about you, because you hold me in your heart. For all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the third chapter. John the Baptist is a herald of Jesus, whose way is prepared by repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As we hear the careful record of human leaders, we sense the spectrum of political and religious authority that will be challenged by this coming Lord. The lesson begins. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea and 
Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Ituria and Trachonitis, and Lysanias, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The gospel of the Lord. Well, it is. It's starting to look a lot like Christmas, isn't it? The sanctuary is all decorated, and I've seen quite a few Christmas lights out on the neighbors' houses, and since, I think, 4th of July, the stores have been decorated for Christmas. <laughs> and indeed, it is starting to look a lot like Christmas, but there's still two candles yet to be lit. And while the rest of the world is already singing Christmas carols and eating their Christmas cookies, we are still in the midst of Advent. We, we are still lighting Advent candles and we are singing Advent hymns. By the way, if any of you are music composers, we could use a few more really good Advent hymns. Just saying. We are not yet singing Christmas carols. And when the rest of the world has already finished with Christmas, we'll just be getting started. We still have work to do. It's still Advent. For John the Baptist is still out in the wilderness, preparing the way of the Lord. John is still out in the wilderness, calling us to repentance for the forgiveness of sins. One of my seminary professors I've always thought of as kind of a John the Baptist type kind of guy. Roy was kind of grumpy and kind of stern, and he was one of the best professors in seminary, but he was also without a doubt one of the most difficult professors in seminary. No one coasted through Roy's classes. And so he was not the favorite professor of many of my classmates. And even though he was liked by some, he was respected by almost everyone. Now, one of the things in seminary that was expected and required was that every student was expected to attend chapel every day. Well, towards the end of the semester, it became obvious that not everyone was making it to chapel. So one day, right before chapel was supposed to start, Roy went through the dorms, banging on the doors, sending everyone to chapel. Now, Roy was not doing that to embarrass people. He was not even doing it to make them feel bad about skipping chapel. 
He wasn't doing it so that he could get a list and get people into trouble. But Roy was doing it to remind people of what was most important. Indeed, we might say we, he was doing it to call people to repentance, to turn them away from all of those things that they thought were more important than going to chapel, studying for that big test, getting an extra half hour of sleep. All of those things that had kept them back in the dorm and not in chapel. Roy wanted them to remember what it was that they really came to seminary for, to love God, and to learn how to share that love with one another with their classmates and professors and the congregations they would go to, Roy called us to repentance, to turn away from all those other things and turn ourselves back towards God. On the second Sunday of Advent, John the Baptist continues to call us from the wilderness to repent to turn away from all of those things that are keeping us from loving God and from loving our neighbor, to turn away from all of those things that are keeping us from truly experiencing the presence of God, to keep us, to turn, calling us to turn away from all of those things that would keep us from experiencing the joy of Christmas. And indeed, it is, there are plenty of those things, aren't there? There's all of the busyness in the world, all of the things that we think are so important, whether it's Christmas cookies or Christmas presents or getting the house cleaned up for all of those Christmas visitors or whether it's all of those other things that so weigh us down, whether it is our selfishness or our sinfulness, or all of the ways that our culture and we ourselves cause one another to hurt and to suffer. John, on this second Sunday of Advent, calls to us from the wilderness to turn around, to turn away from those things that separate us from God and from one another, and to turn ourselves back to Christ, to live the lives that God has created us to live. Indeed, as we light this second candle, God is calling us to turn around, to turn our lives and our hearts and our minds away from all of those other things, some of them important and some of them disastrous, but to turn our minds and our hearts and our lives towards Christ. He is the one, the voice calling from the wilderness, preparing the way of the Lord. Amen.
Let us continue our worship, proclaiming our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate to the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. You send messengers into the world. Proclaim the day of your coming. Make our bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay ministers confident in their preaching that their words and our lives witness to your grace. Hear us, O God. Send your spirit to all living creatures that are in danger. Provide them with shelter and care and bring us into a right relationship with the earth that you create and call good. Hear us, O God. Send leaders to our nation, cities, schools, and businesses to work on behalf of those who have lost parents, spouses, and loved ones, immigrants, the imprisoned, those living in poverty, and all who are oppressed. Make them bold in their commitments to justice and reconciliation. Hear us, O oh God. Send your servants to care for those who suffer. Use our ministries and our lives to reach out with compassion to those who are hungry, oppressed, lonely, or ill. We remember especially today, Lee Ann Brum, Dale Hankey, Ken Girardi, Steve O'Connor, Amy Ward, Ron Roberts, Kelsey Erickson, Joel Luna, Mary Beth Fair, and all of those whom we name in our hearts. Grant them healing and wholeness. Hear us, O oh God. Send us, O oh Lord, to bring healing and comfort to those whose hearts are breaking and lives are shattered as we witness another school shooting. Give us wisdom and courage to do all that is necessary to put an end to this hor horrific violence. Hear us, O oh God. Send prophets to speak difficult truths even when they are poorly received. Embolden those who ask hard questions and challenge accepted ways instill in youth and elders alike a passion for pointing to Jesus in all things. Hear us, O oh God. 
God of new life. You come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers in those of our hearts. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God of our waiting and watching, we offer the gifts of our hearts and our lives to the service of all your people. Prepare the way before us as we meet you in this simple meal. Through Christ Jesus, our pathway and our peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. For those of you communing with the kits today, and those of you communing along with us at home, this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. This is the first Sunday of the month. That means we are going to commune at the table today. And so we will, yes, Bob, we're changing it up again. We're going to start with the left side of the congregation We will come down here and work our way around. We've got the Advent candle kind of in the way, so don't go too far. And then when you're finished, we would like it if the person at this end would lead us out. That way we don't have a bottleneck right here, and everyone gets communed and no one gets knocked over. And when we've finished with the left side, then the right side will start. But you'll come over and start about here and work clear around. And then the person on this end will lead us out that way. Clear as mud, I know. Let us begin.
Let us pray. Oh God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated. For any of you who may not yet have heard um, the memorial celebration of life service for our friend Diane Reams is next Saturday at 2.30 here in here at Kent. And Saturday's going to be a big and busy day here at Kent because in the morning is cookie and candy sale day. So um, we will be doing that as well. And I'm guessing we've got we need, still need cookies and candies and helpers. So there's a sign-up sheet for some of that. No. Just bring it. Just bring it and come. Awesome. Um, what else do we need to announce or talk about today? Oh, yes, there's a welcome Christmas party, and it's Wednesday, Tuesday, don't, Tuesday, 1030, the kids from um, Hurricane Deck are going to come and entertain us, there's going to be soup and salad, and we're going to do the potluck on the goodies. Is that correct? What other important information do we need to know about the party? All the ladies are invited, and the honorary woman of the ELCA will be there. There's a sign up sheet on the welcome board in there that we need to sign up for soup and salad and desserts. And so we'll also know how to. So we do need to sign up for the Welka Christmas party. I'm getting better at repeating what people are saying. Pasta fajol is the soup of the day. Do we have any first-time visitors with us today? Hello, welcome to Kent. And you want to introduce yourself, or are you going to make your, your host introduce you? I'm Karen Thompson. Karen Thompson is with us today from Mallard Bay. From Mallard Bay. Welcome to Kent.
Hearing God's call and responding in love, we share Jesus with all.